Is he okay? Is there a problem here? He's thinking. Mr. Monk, we know about your reputation, and we uh, we appreciate your help. Uh, but this is a big case. I've got the feds breathing down my neck. I've got CNN outside. I don't have all day here. I can't focus. It's too noisy. What's what's noisy? It's uh, it's the traffic. <laughs> but we're inside. I can hear it. Would you like us to shut down Midtown Manhattan so you can focus here? Would that be inconvenient? Uh, excuse me, too, if I just talked to him for a sec? What's going on? Can't you hear that? Can't you hear that? No. It's, it's relentless. What? Sirens. Yeah, there's no mob switch here, OK? I mean, I, look, I wish there was, but there isn't, OK? The buses. Oh, come here. These are the people who are going to help us find Tennyson, OK? So let's dazzle them here. That way they'll always win. Remember, we're here for Trudy. Come on. His coat. Whose coat? The ambassador's coat. It's damp. He's right. And the other coats are dry. How'd we missed that. You get used to it. I remember when the ambassador came in, he brushed up against me. His coat was dry. Well, his coat was dry then, but it's wet now. Maybe the shooter switched coat. Hey. Dmitry Kreslov. No, it's the right coat. Now, that's the damnedest thing. This might not have been political. Well, he was an ambassador, for God's sake. His country's on the brink of a civil war. What else could it be? Well, look at how the bodies fell. The shooter killed the two bodyguards first. Well, sure he did, on account of they were armed. Nope. No, if this was political, he would have taken out his primary target first, the ambassador. And he wouldn't have used a 22 caliber. It's a pea shooter. Well, it seemed to do the trick. The shooter got lucky. Whatever happened here wasn't planned. It, it just happened. She left the courthouse at 4.45. She was last seen driving north on the 101 by a surveillance camera right here. She was alone in the car. It's not centered. That what? Good. Good. <laughs> OK, now her car was found in a parking lot here was unlocked, it had been wiped clean. There were no prints, no fibers. I got some photographs here. Oh. oh, no, I, I can't see, I can't focus. I can't see. OK, we'll look at the pictures later. Yeah. Can you turn this? Thank you. Oh, that's good. What is this thing? It's a humidifier. What's that one? It's a dehumidifier. Well, don't they cancel each other out? Exactly. Um, we uh, know that she was seeing somebody. He might be married. Oh. We can tell by her credit card records that um, they went on a trip together in February. They went to Oakley, Idaho, February 10th for two weeks. Uh, he's not married. He's not married? No. Well, how do you know that? Monk, how, how do you know he's not married? Uh, oh, they were there on Valentine's Day. He was married, he, he would have stayed home. Yeah, yeah. you're right. I need a baggie. They're in the drawer. 
Good monk. Can you focus here, please? Yeah. Yeah. OK, OK, OK. OK, monk, focus here, would you? Zip it. Why? You got to zip it. Why keep it a secret? Uh, yeah, I'm going to need another baggie. Yeah, but this baggie into another baggie. This big baggie? That's the one. Okay, Monk, stay with me here, okay? She's a judge. So maybe he was someone that uh, she was not allowed. To see socially. Yes, like a lawyer is someone who might be involved in one of her cases, a conflict of interest. Make sure it's airtight. Gotta zip it. That only usually folds it twice. First you zip it, then you fold it twice. But first you gotta get the air out. You gotta let the air out first. Let the air out first. Monk, I know you probably can't tell because I'm hiding it so well. I really don't like this. We could divert to Pittsburgh. No, this time of day, they'd probably give us priority right into Newark. What is this? That's heart medicine. Oh, well, the guy had a heart attack. I don't think so. Are you a doctor? N no, sir. I'm a homicide detective. Can I see some ID? Well, actually, um, I'm not currently active. Mm -hmm. But there's a situation on the plane. I've been watching two of your passengers. I think they might have been involved in a homicide back at the airport and in this. Bobby, this is the man that I was telling you about. Sir, I'm going to ask you to go back to your seat. No, no, you don't understand. No, no, you don't understand. You're making a scene. Now, please turn around and go back to your seat. Wine glass. The old man knew that's not his real wife. I think they killed him. They what? Can you prove it? Well, an autopsy would. But that'd take three or four days. They'll be in France by then. It'd take years to extradite them. Unless I have proof. Physical proof. What is it? I don't know. Some kind of powder. Do you have a match? Yes. Get a little bit of this. The company gave me this for selling 1,000 miles of extension cord. What is it we're doing now, Adrian? Burning off the alcohol residue. Hey, stewardess, that guy has a lighter. What is it? Ethylene. It's a solvent used in refrigerator coolant. Excuse me, were you just using that? No. Yes, he was. I could see him. No, 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 he was just playing with it. It, it, it won't happen again. Oh, you're right, it won't. Give it to me, please. Oh, I'm sorry. And the company gave it to me. You'll get it when we land. And the glass. No, 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 no not, not the glass. That's material evidence. Where did you dump her? Pardon me? Your wife. What did you do with the body? He's upset. I, I spilled some wine on him earlier. Mr. Monk, I'm only going to say this once. It is a federal offense to disobey a flight attendant. But if you get out of your seat again, I will call the air marshals and have them meet you when we land. Sit down. What, what are you doing? You won't be needing that again. I did. Miss Raffleson? Madre de Dios, Miss Raffleson! Madre de Dios! Career day. What would I talk about? Your career. Your job. Yeah. Oh, come on, Mr. Monk. It would mean so much to Julie. Yeah, I, I, I can't do it. I'm sorry. I, I can't speak in public. Yeah, yeah, see, that's not true. 
Remember when I first started working for you and you made that list of all your fears and phobias? There are 103 things. Public speaking wasn't one of them. <sighs> Actually, there were a couple of things that I didn't mention. I didn't want you to think I was weird. Why don't you ask the captain? Oh, whatever it is, thank you for asking, but I can't do it. Yeah, I think we're done, huh? <coughs> The housekeeper has her own key. She comes in every other week. She found the body right here a couple hours ago. Her name is uh, Joanne Raffleson, 36, former Vegas showgirl. The coroner just took the body. Says she's been dead for five days. So that makes it uh, Wednesday morning. Wednesday? Excuse me, why are we here? She killed herself, right? Uh, maybe. I'm not sure. I noticed a few things. I wanted to run them by you. I found a letter from a publisher in New York. She was about to have a book published. A memoir called Between the Sheets, the Joanne Raffleson story. Between the... Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I get it. And a check for 50 grand, which she has not deposited. Pretty weird time to hang yourself, huh? Good work, sir. Oh, you don't have to sound so surprised, Randy. Oh, I'm not surprised. Awestruck. Awestruck. Well, don't be. And that's an order. You ordered me not to be awestruck. That's right. Stand over there and don't be awestruck. Sir? Anything else? Uh, yeah, looks like her computer's missing. There's a power strip with a surge protector, a printer, and no computer. Excuse me, sir. Sorry. I've never disobeyed an order in my life. It's really good work. It's awesome. Randy? Why don't you go outside and talk to the neighbors? Yes, sir. It's awesome. So am I right? Something's not kosher. It's your driver's license. How tall you think that stool is? Uh, about 18 inches. Oops, seven, six. But according to her license, she's only five, five. I'm five, five. Step up. You're right. It doesn't add up. Do you have a piece of paper? No. Isn't that a notepad in your pocket? Calcium oxide, quick lime. What's that supposed to mean? It's used to cover up smells. Smugglers use it to fool drug sniffing dogs. Oh, I've seen the mob use it when they try to hide a body. You've seen the mob use it? I mean, in that movie Goodfellas, I saw it. Actually, this is good news. How so? Because it means the body's still in the hotel, right? So that means we have to keep checking every bag going out. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Your time is up. We had a deal. Oh, come on. The deal is off, Tony. Work with us here. If they get rid of the body, we have no case. I'll give you until noon tomorrow. You'll be checking out then anyway. Tick. 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 Gotta hate it when people go tick, tick, tick. What? The groundskeeper. He's using lime. Well, I think you should take eight or nine hours and check it out.
Who are you calling? Who do you think? Security. Security extension 404. Give my regards to Bronwyn. How do you know Bronwyn? I'm working with her on a case. Oh, yeah. I, I've seen you with her. I'm Raleigh. You want to tell me what's going on? One second. Why didn't you report it, Riley? Report what? The missing bags of lime. How'd you know about that? I thought I could handle it myself. How many did they take? Three. When did this happen? Sometime last night, that's all I know. Was that door locked? All the time, deadbolt. I'm the only one with a key. What do they weigh? About 40 pounds each? 50. Heavy bags. Locked door. They probably used the window. There had to be... There had to be more than one person. I think we're looking for a gang. Did they move those pallet boards? They don't belong there. They were short. A short gang of lime thieves? It's a nutty world. Oh my god. Jeremiah, I've got it. I know how she did it. You do? If that's how you take someone's pulse. I know how she did it. Adrian, let's go. You're on. You, come here. How did she do it? Allergies. Hal Duncan had lots of allergies. The wardrobe lady said he was afraid to eat anything he didn't make himself. That's why Jenna wanted him in that part. He was the perfect patsy. The prop master told me that Jenna was hanging out on stage before the show, but she wasn't switching knives. She was tampering with the apples. The apples? She must have been putting something on them or in them. <laughs> something that Hal Duncan was allergic to. That's right. My mom said they tasted funny. Like I said. I'm here for what's mine. Ah! Hal Duncan wasn't stabbed. He was having an allergic reaction. But he was stabbed. There was a real knife in his chest. I know, I, I, I know, I know. It was a brilliant plan. You're still here? What? You're on. No, 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 no. Look, Adrian, Adrian, if you don't go on stage, she's going to know something's up. Do you want to go downstairs, check her dressing room? Hey, what am I looking for? Evidence. Something Hal Duncan was allergic to. Shellfish, eggs, peanuts. <laughs> Hey, cuz. Did you miss me? I hope you don't mind. I'll let myself in. Bird, you're supposed to be in jail. Funny that phrase, supposed to be. You're supposed to be in jail. I'm supposed to be in jail. You're supposed to be waiting for me. Man can't count on. Used to be the way he's supposed to. Yes, yes, we can prove it. Look, are you almost here? Great, I'll see you soon. You better go. My husband's upstairs. If he hears you. Your husband's downtown. Drowning himself in scotch and soda. 
I saw him leave here about an hour. I have money in my purse here. Take it. You think I want your pocket change? You think that's why I came back? the tall salad. <laughs> oh my God. I'm here for what's mine. Bert, if you don't leave, I... You'll what? Huh? You'll do nothing. He said, be careful, she knows. Like I said, I came for what's mine. <laughs> Is there a doctor in the house? Everybody, stay in your seats. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm a police you officer. Okay? Everything is under I'm control. Right. Everybody just sit down. What are you doing? We're reenacting the crime. You're the victim. What, what if the elevator starts up? It'll get caught again. It's not going to get caught. Well, then you'd be the victim. No, 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 no. Uh, Sharona was always the victim. Yeah, I'm sure she was. No, I, I can't be the victim. I'm the detective. I have to step back and observe the scene. Yeah, well, I can observe stuff too. Like, a, this is a crime scene. No, 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 scene. no, no. You, you don't look. You don't know what to look for. Okay. I mean, we have a system. It's a good system. There's an old saying. Don't change anything, ever. That's an old saying. I've been saying it for years. I know it's only two million dollars, but two million here, four million there, after a while we're talking about real money. Yeah, the answer is no. Okay, I'm Mrs. Thorne. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, looks fantastic on you, by the way. All right, all right. We walk out. Mm -hmm. We stop. I forgot the tickets. We look for the tickets. I must have left them upstairs. I walk back to the elevator. I press P, penthouse, the door is closed. The scarf gets caught. Maybe somebody was hiding up there. Well, that's possible. But Mrs. Thorne was yelling about the scarf, not, not about some attacker. Yeah. So she's alone. She presses her thumb. What are you doing, huh? Do you think this is funny? I mean, you, you, you rifle through my pockets and, Stepping and you on make it. a mockery of me like this? I just buried my wife. We are not mocking you, Mr. Thorne. We are trying an experiment. I could have you arrested, and I'm going to. Are you okay? Do you need some water? No, I'm okay. I'm okay. Okay. I'm okay. What? Question for me? No, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm on my way to a board meeting. I'm already late. Wait, wait, wait a minute. One, one minute. Did I do something to offend you, sir? I mean, why don't you let this thing go? What happened to my wife was an accident. Ten witnesses saw her get onto the elevator alone. When it stopped, she was dead. They said that. They said. They said your wife was screaming for help, and that she called your name. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. I, I will never forget that moment. But just now, I was being strangled by the scarf, like your wife. 
I couldn't yell anything. I, I couldn't even breathe. How do you explain that, sir? I can't explain it, can you? I loved my wife, Mr. Monk. As much as you love Terry Talenko? Yeah, I know you talked to Terry. Virtue was not one of my virtues, and uh, Cheryl knew that. Uh, she accepted it, and you know, she realized that being married to Daniel Thorne in this town had other compensations. Now, you, you don't have any idea who you're dealing with, do you? Come here, let, let me show you something. The local rag put this picture on the front page. Now, I asked them not to publish it, and they ignored me, so yesterday morning, I bought controlling interest in that company so I could personally fire that son of a bitch editor and the photographer and the publisher. Now, you understand? Now, that's who you're dealing with. I own this town. Now, Miss Teeger, you worked at the Bellagio. All right, so you've done your homework. Yeah, so why don't you tell your friend what the first rule of Vegas is, the golden rule, the only rule? The house always wins. Always. Yeah, there it is. It's ruined now. You cut it all up. Saved your life. It's jungle out there. Disorder and confusion everywhere. No one seems to care. Well, I do. Hey, who's in charge here? It's jungle out there.